Okay. Uh, thanks, Jake, for that introduction. And so this will be the start of a series I think we have planned um, another uh, four after this uh, covering Metamorph NX in depth. And so what we're looking at as far as the schedule goes, uh, we're going to cover the software installation, hardware configuration, and hardware control today. Then uh, next week we'll look at the AMI's acquisition. Then there will be a week off, and then finishing up the rest of March. Uh, we're going to do image analysis. We're going to split that into two different sections. The first uh, section will be the basic measurements and application modules. So we'll go through the tools that are available in Metamorph for that, and then. The second section will be the custom analysis. So that is um, covering more or less the, that has all the processing tools and functions available and how you can create a complete um, custom function within the software. And uh, we'll show you how that's done. And then finally, we'll finish up with uh, automation. So looking at how uh, things can be somewhat automated within the, uh, the software. So today, what we're going to cover is we'll look at installing the software, and we'll go through the configuration of both the software and the hardware within Metamorph NX. So looking at the installation and licensing requirements for Metamorph NX, we'll cover the required items, the prerequisites, we'll talk about the hardware key, license file, um, software install, and so forth. So required items, you'll need the Installation CD and CD being in quotes because um, that is somewhat relative now. It doesn't necessarily have to be on a disk. It could be on a thumb drive or a folder on your, your hard drive as well that you can install off of. You'll need a memory key, and this is the same memory key that is used for um, uh, Metamorph for Olympus. So um, it uses a, a different section of the, the Sentinel system key. Basically, all it is is a little check of can you run Metamorph NX or not, and so that's what this gives you is that ability. Um, so it uses the same key, so you can have both Metamorph for Olympus installed as well as Metamorph NX installed on the same system, and it'll use the same key. And then there's also the uh, installation code, so there's a license file that is associated with this instead of just a registration authorization code that you have to type in or copy uh, from a sheet. Uh, this actually uses a license file. When we go through the installation process, you'll kind of see um, what that is and um, so forth. So starting the installation, you run the auto run menu, pops up, and then you click on the install and configure Metamorph NX. This opens up the configuration utility. Uh, you can just click next to, to click through as far as the different sections that are covered for the installation. So the first section is the prerequisites. So these are the kind of Windows level uh, files that are needed as well as the Sentinel system driver uh, that is needed. And plus, if you have a Microsoft Office, you want to be able to send data to Excel or in Metamorph NX, there's also a um, export to PowerPoint. So uh, you need these interoperable uh, assemblies and it's based on whichever version of Microsoft Office that you have. So you can click through and click these one at a time to install each component one at a time, or you can click on the Install All Required Components. Uh, check boxes uh, let you know that those are, have been ex installed successfully. If there is a um, triangle, kind of like a caution sign, it means that it needs to be installed. Uh, if there's an X, it's not installed at all. So you can click Next when you're done. Typically, with the Signal System Driver, there will be a reboot in the in between. So after it's done installing that, you have to reboot the system. But um, then you can start again. So the next step is the Verify Hardware Key. So it'll check that the key is installed. It'll check that the system ID is actually invalid, is valid, and then we'll check that the key has been programmed with a specific number. And also check that the key has not been expired. Then we have the license file. So there's two different ways of doing this. The install license file is you have an actual copy of that file, either on a thumb drive or on the, the 
hard drive somewhere, and you just navigate to the directory where that file is located, uh, and then it will um, copy that into the appropriate folder. Or additionally, if the system is connected to the Internet, you can download and install a license file for that. And then once that is uh, downloaded and installed, you'll get all the check boxes. It tells you where the file is located. It does put things in different locations depending on which operating system uh, that you're running. So uh, this, I believe, is a Windows, system, uh, Windows 7, so it puts it in a program data on the, the C drive um, and so forth. So it really depends on which operating system and where the files um, will be put. And it's a .mlic metamorph license file um, is the extension for that. The other thing uh, to let you know as far as with metamorph for Olympus, if you wanted to add new features, a new hardware control, or say a new camera driver, or um, you've added uh, like application modules and so forth uh, after the system has been initially installed. In order to unlock those features within Metamorph NX, you have to actually download and install a new uh, license file. Uh, that also goes with, if you have the you know, complete package, sometimes they'll add some new uh, components to the system. Uh, you'll probably have to download and install uh, a new license file to, to unlock those uh, new features as well. So it's always best when you're coming in and updating the system to make sure you do have the latest uh, license file that goes with that to make sure they're getting, your customers getting everything that they uh, are supposed to be getting. So you want to make sure you have a new license file pretty much if you're adding new stuff to the system. If the install is a network key, meaning that you will have one key located onto a computer that other computers can see, uh, this is the process for um, doing that connection. So it can see, um, the, looking for the hardware key, you can give it the IP address of where it's located or the computer name and so forth. Um, so this allows you to set up in a facility where you have one key, but it'll have multiple seats associated with it. That means the multiple copies of the software being able to be run at once. So you have that avail availability as you do with Metamorph for Olympus and Metamorph NX. So if you're not doing a network licensing install, then you can just click Next uh, through this. So the last section is the actual installation of the software of the Metamorph NX. So depending on which operating system you're using, whether it's 32-bit or 64-bit, or if you want to install a 32-bit version of Metamorph onto the 64-bit OS, you can do that. Although um, this used to be an issue um, a couple years ago when there were still some hardware drivers that were not 64-bit compatible. But to the best of my knowledge, there's not too many um, pieces of hardware out there that are no longer um, not supported in 64-bit. So typically, if you're doing a 64-bit OS, I would do the 64-bit option for that. And then uh, it tells you which version, if there's a version already installed, uh, that's there. You can also check for updates. The update file in updating Metamorph NX is slightly different than in Metamorph for Olympus. So Metamorph for Olympus, it had the MM updates uh, updater program that you run. You would select a zip file. Well, for Metamorph NX, there's a .msi file that is run or executed, and it uses that same file for actual installation as it does for um, for an update. And so you can just double-click on the MSI file, and it will launch uh, the update or the installer for that particular version. So our version numbers also look a little different. So major version uh, is the first number, minor version, and then each release within that minor version is the last number. So typically we'll read this as uh, Metamorph, or, uh, Metamorph NX 2.5.0. Um, the larger number in between is the actual build number for that version, so we kind of ignore those for the most part. So it's the first two and the last number are the, the main ones that we kind of keep track of as far as which version is being run.
So actually installing the NX software. So once you've clicked on the install for that specific version, it comes in with the actual installer, and in this case it's the 64-bit installer. So you just click Next to proceed, uh, accept the license agreement, and click Next. And then you want to select Typical for the install. The difference between Typical and Complete, a Complete will add a few additional um, things that are typically used, mostly used by the programmers. Um, so for most installation that you'll do, you use the typical uh, function for that. So just click install, goes through, get the progress bar as it's installing, and then you'll click finish once it's done. And then you will uh, you can come in and then launch the software. So looking at the Metamorph NX configuration settings, so these are some settings that you can customize and set up within the application itself. So we'll, we'll walk through these. You're looking at the resource configuration, experiment configuration, acquisition, status output, uh, image display, and then the optional access controls. We'll kind of go through those as well. So one of the things you can do, one of the I think it's kind of the, the cooler features that are available with the Metamorph NX is that you can capture the software configuration. So what this will do is it will create a zip file that you can send to us. So if you're having some issues with the application, you can uh, create this zip file, send it to us. And the zip file includes all the hardware settings so we'll know exactly what you have configured, how you have it configured. The application state file, so this is the kind of a configuration file of the application. It'll have all the configuration settings uh, that are available within the application. Also, the status output log, which uh, status output log is any kind of minor errors it finds while it's operating, it'll create a log file for that, and I'll kind of show you where that is, um, what that looks like as well. And then the license file, so we can have all that information into a single zip file we can unzip that and actually replicate your system um, in-house exactly as you have it configured. So it's a good way of, for us to be able to try to troubleshoot and find any issues that you may be um, having. So that's the capture software configuration. This is found in the file menu associated in Metamorph NX. The administration settings. So these are the options dialog. It's available from the file menu. So you just select options, and it comes up with the administration settings dialog. And then we'll walk through um, each of these separately. So the first is the resource configuration. So you have three options, uh, greedy, nice, or specified. I would recommend selecting greedy, just so that the software can handle and utilize as much um, system resource, memory cache, and so forth as uh, it can use during the operation. So it's one of those where it, um, being greedy in this case is a good thing uh, for the application. The experiment storage location, so these are the directories where, the default directories where the experiment load path, so when you click on the load experiment button, it will um, go to this directory first. Same thing with the save path. When you click save experiment, uh, where does it go to first initially? So you can set those default paths. You can set a default name for the experiment. And then same thing with the image open path. So if you have um, want to open specific images, you can do that within the um, with this directory as well. And then there's default uh, data set prefix name. Uh, if we have time at the end, I do want to would like to do this kind of a, a, a quick overview of the application. And we'll talk about some of these concepts, what it means with the experiment and data set and so forth. There is um, another option specific for you is the Olympus OAP image. Uh, whether you want to load it as a time series, you can check that box. And once those are loaded directly, it will come in as a time series as the aspect of the multidimensional configuration for that. Acquisition configuration, so these are the paths where the master hardware profile file and the user hardware profile um, files are located, as well as a uh, scratch folders. So for any of the 
this is, comes into play when you're dealing with the custom analysis tools. So it, it'll create a um, kind of a temporary location for storage for storing images and so forth. You can set that uh, location there. The status output configuration. So this is the log file as it's recording any warnings, errors, and other information that uh, may pop up through the course of the operation of the software. So you can set the, the directory where that is located. The, you can set the, the maximum size as the option here. And then finally, the threshold level, I think this goes from 0 to 4 or 5. And uh, you can set that. So 0 means it will capture everything. 5, it will only capture the most critical information. So uh, because it, it can uh, capture a lot of different messages as it goes along, uh, when you set this up, you may want to bump this up to, to like maybe a three or something like that, so that way you're not, you know, scaring your customers uh, because of how long that that list can be, um, where it doesn't necessarily uh, have to capture everything. And the nice thing about Metamorph NX also is the fact that um, it will make every attempt to keep working no matter what issues it runs into. So unless it's you know a complete showstopper where it, it crashes the application. In most situations, it's going to uh, keep working or, or keep attempting to work, and so, um, which is kind of a good thing. So that's why you can adjust the threshold level as far as what shows up for the customer. The image di dis grid display options. So I'm sorry, the image display options. You can um, a couple check boxes for the image grid overlay, uh, memory usage statistics, uh, whether they show up or not. And then additionally, as far as enable graphic hardware acceleration, so if you got a decent graphics card, I would highly recommend checking that box so it utilizes the card to the best of its ability. That's there. The 4D viewer option, uh, this is where you set the maximum memory usage, and the default is set to 300 megabytes. So I would definitely recommend changing this value to at least uh, 2 gigs or more. A lot of it also depends on how much uh, RAM you have available on the system because uh, you want a larger number when you're looking at, at larger data sets within the 4D viewer. So uh, again, when we get to the overview, um, I'll show you the 4D viewer that's there. And the last option we have is the optional ac access uh, configuration. So what this will allow you to do is you can hide the hardware configuration uh, active context tab. And uh, this is an all or nothing. So you know, if you hide it in this step, uh, it will be uh, everything will be hidden so you won't be able to create any new illumination settings or magnification settings. So in a core facility, that may be beneficial for them, but for everyday users, they may not necessarily want to. Uh, to do that. So when you hide it, you have the option of setting the password, which to unhide it, you'll have to type in the password um, for that. So uh, you do have that control available to you as well. So just sorry, just checking the list. Make sure there's nothing that came up for uh, Q&A yet. Okay. So now we're looking at hardware configuration. So we'll go through as far as how to set up a camera, installing devices, loading devices. We'll look at the illumination configuration, magnification configuration and then the hardware controls for the different components that are available and the camera controls for that. So this may look a little, uh, definitely looks a little different if this is your first time seeing Metamorph NX. So the application uses ribbons. So you have the active contacts are looking across the top um, or similar to, uh, to menus that are available and that opens up the different ribbons associated with that active contacts. So what we're going to be going through is the actual hardware setup ribbon, um, and specifically we'll be focusing on these functions um, on the right-hand side of the ribbon. And like I said, at the end, I think we'll have enough time that um, I'll kind of do a, just a brief overview of the application, kind of show you 
uh, some of these new um, enhancements that are with the software. So the import from Metamore 7, so if you have a copy of Metamore 7 installed on the system, you can import those settings directly. And um, this can be somewhat finicky. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I've had the most success if I actually select import from group and select the Metamore for the Metamore for Olympus group. Uh, these are the default directories for those configuration files. And then that will import everything from the hardware configuration, the elimination settings, um, the specific camera that you have installed and everything. So uh, you have that ability if you've already had Metamorph for Olympus installed on a, on a system and you're now installing Metamorph NX, you can bring in those settings to help with the configuration. Uh, if not, you can also e easily do this manually. So the first thing we'll look at is the select camera setup. That opens up the uh, camera configuration pane. So it comes in, and as far as the available camera drivers in the list, you highlight the driver you want to um, activate or make active. So you highlight that and hit active camera. Then that now becomes the active camera. If you click on the configure camera button, that brings up the dialog that you've seen in the Metamorph for Olympus uh, camera configurations. So this is specific to the camera you are uh, trying to, uh, to integrate into the system. So those are the settings for that specific camera. You have um, installed devices is the next option. So this is the same as the installed system devices in Metamorph for Olympus. So this dialog will look very familiar to you. So you have a list of available hardware. You highlight the hardware. Select install, and then you come in, uh, as before, select settings for the upper level to do the initial communication um, setting selection, and then any configurations you need to do for the individual components, you can do that um, through the settings options by highlighting the components. Load devices, the same as the claim devices in Metamorph for Olympus. So the available drivers or available devices are on the left-hand side. Click Add or Add All. It adds them to the claim side. And then now they're available to be utilized within Metamorph Index. So one of the nice things now about Metamorph Index is that the hardware configuration is done within the application. So if you forget to do something, you don't have to exit out, launch another program, complete the configuration, close that, then launch uh, the application again so everything's done within the application uh, through these options in the hardware setup. Okay, once you have the hardware configured, now you can set up the individual illumination and magnification configurations. So on the hardware palette, hardware setup palette is the illumination settings. That brings up the illumination settings uh, pane. You click on Add New Setting, as a, a name and a list. You type in the, the name that you want. Uh, as the configuration is similar to the Metamorph for Olympus, type in the wavelength. That will associate a lookup table to that wavelength value. And then you check the individual components that you're wanting to control. You set those specific positions for that wavelength. Then click um, Save Current Setting, and it will save that. Um, in your list. Uh, hit add new setting, new configuration, say current setting, and so forth. Um, rinse, lather, and repeat, right? So uh, you just do that for the entire list of the configurations that you uh, want to utilize. Uh, Metamorph NX also has a couple different options, There's other peripherals, so any other components. So now you can actually um, be more specific on other aspects of, of hardware that you may want to control for this specific setting. So in Metamorph for Olympus, there were certain components that could have been classified either a magnification component or an illumination component. And the software made a determination more or less from the very beginning on whether it's going to show up on the magnification list or the illumination uh, configuration list. And there was no 
way to really be able to switch between the, the two or, or take it off of one list and add it to the other. Now you have the ability to actually control those components with the other peripherals here. So if you want to set up um, a component that may be associated with uh, a magnification setting or a magnification type of device, now that can also be controlled and configured with an elimination setting. Magnification settings, the dialogue's uh, somewhat similar. You have all the motorized components will, will come down to the bottom uh, portion over here. So these are all manual configurations. So you can type in, if you have a manual scope, check the manual box, and then you can fill in the information here. Additionally, this is the only spot that you can put in a calibration setting for that objective. And this has to be typed in manually. Uh, Metamorph Index currently does not have a, a wizard um, or a dialogue configuration for uh, calculating the calibration. So you just have to do the back of the envelope of the pixel size divided by the total magnification of the system. That will be the uh, calibration value that you can enter for that magnification setting. So you have to just type that in manually, um, and that's the option here. And as I said before, if you have a motorized microscope, the motorized components will show up um, above where it says here the other peripherals. And the same thing, you check the, the components, you set the positions, um, and you give it the name for the defined, in this case, 60x or 40x magnification setting. Harbor settings. So this more or less is all the, the different harbor components that you can control and you can set. Uh, values. So in this case, I'm setting an X, Y, and Z position value, calling that my field of view uh, one. So I can just now select that and go right to that position uh, automatically just from a drop down list of selection. So I can configure multiple hardware settings, and this kind of is overarching above the illumination and magnification. So if I can set my illumination and magnification and come in and do my hardware settings, the hardware setting is going to override if. I have the same components in um, both of these, either the hardware settings and the illumination settings. The hardware settings will override uh, those options selected from the illumination settings. So this gives you a little more uh, control for additional components um, if you need them. So hardware control. So we'll look at illumination and magnification control. So you select these settings that are configured in the configuration, and now they become a drop-down list. And this is, again, in the ribbon at the top. You just select either the, the harbor setting, the illumination setting, and the magnification setting uh, for those. The, when we get to the acquisition uh, ribbon next week, we will look at as far as the magnification and illumination settings uh, can be selected within that ribbon as well. But you also have in the hardware settings the ability to uh, select those. There's stage control and Z control. So these are discrete values, or you can use the up down if you uh, move the cursor in there. You get up down arrows. You can use those to change the, the positions. Your X, Y, and Z. If you have a, a second Z motor associated with the system, you have that option as well. And then you can the select Z, um, motors is allows you to specify which components are associated with. Uh, the, so if you have more than one Z motor, you can select which one you want to be Z1 and which one you want to be Z2. And same thing with which is your X and which is your Y uh, component for that. That's the select motors options. A couple other new features uh, that are available in Metamorph NX. Uh, the first is wheel control. So if you have a wheel mouse, you can assign a axis control component to that wheel. So when it's enabled, meaning when it's highlighted yellow like this, when you move the wheel, it will change that specific position. And this is cool enough that I think I want to um, show you this in Metamorph NX. Okay. So I have right now um, my... Z motor is just a prior uh, Z control. And so I can change that position just by clicking in or by adjusting the value automatically. 
but if I come in and actually um, assign assign this, now once I enable turn it on, notice here the value, and as I'm adjusting my wheel, it's changing the Z position automatically. So now you can um, just use the the mouse to change a specific position. So I can you know, switch that to say my X stage. Now I'm changing the X position just by rotating the wheel on the mouse. So that's kind of cool um, aspect of that. And then input device. So if you have a programmable type of uh, keypad or, or keyboard or a multifunction um, mouse, you can set up the inputs for those specific um, type of programmable devices to control different things. So you can have a programmable keypad to um, control the microscope to change objectives, to you know move the stage, to adjust your Z, to change your um, filter cues or filter wheels and so forth. So that's what I tell people. So now if you ever want to expand your World of Warcraft keypad, now you can do that uh, saying it's for Metamorph NX. Camera control. So again, on the hardware tab, the camera controls. Uh, the snap is just a single acquisition. You have the bin setting available, so you can adjust the bin for that specific um, acquisition. The auto expose calculates uh, the exposure time based on the amount of light that you have available and a target setting. Um, and I'll, when we get to the acquisition portion next week, I'll show you where that value can be set. The start live does the live window acquisition for you, and then the live also has a separate binning available to this. The next section is the chip area of portions of the camera that you're going to be using, full chip, current region, or um, you can create a rectangle region on the image and actually use that one as the option. And then on the hardware tab, this is kind of a newer button that just came out um, within version 2.5. This is a shutter icon, so it just basically toggles, toggles the shutter or shutters that you have based on the active illumination setting you're using. So it just opens and closes the shutters associated with it. Okay, so that is all I have as far as um, installation and hardware configuration. And If I also have any questions, if you want to pop it up into the QA, that's fine. Uh, I see one right now. It says, can the wheel mouse toggle uh, course and flying uh, focus? Um, the wheel mouse is really only utilized for uh, linear type uh, devices, so it's not a um, toggle on or off. So you can't use it to, to toggle the shutters. You can't use it to, in this case, you won't be able to use it to toggle the course and the flying. So you'll have to, to do that switch first before you'll um, use the, uh, the wheel mouse to adjust the, um, the focus in that case. Okay. So since we do have some time, I think what I would like to do, if everyone's okay with it, is just to do a, uh, just a quick brief overview of the application and kind of get you um, hopefully a little more excited about the Metamorph NX uh, product. So, Part of the reason you asked why we actually even developed Metamorph NX, we were looking for something that is easier to learn and to use because the feedback that we got about Metamorph was the fact that it wasn't hard to use, it was just hard to learn. So once you got beyond that steep learning curve, um, people kind of understood and were able to use it uh, fairly well. So what we done with the Metamorph NX, it was a complete uh, redesign. It's actually from the ground up uh, redesign. So they redesigned the menus. Uh, you have docking and auto hiding of pane, so you have the ability to have a nice clean desktop. 
It uses standard ribbons, so graphical buttons with text, uh, something similar that you've seen in the latest versions of Office. And then it's a workflow design, so the ribbons are more or less uh, configured to work from left to right, uh, the way you will more or less interact with them. And additionally, for probably 75 to 80 percent of the functionality that you need to use can be done just from the ribbon itself, so you won't necessarily have to go into multiple dialog boxes to uh, do most of the configurations, because that can most of the majority of it can be done within the uh, the ribbon. But you also have the ability to drill deeper uh, as needed in the configuration settings. And when we get to the acquisition next week, we'll definitely um, get into that as well. So the biggest thing uh, regarding Metamorph NX is the fact that it's experiment-based. So everything is organized around the experiment. So all the images, all the measurements are organized together into, into an experiment folder. So when you actually open something, you're not opening images, you're not opening a specific data set, you're opening an experiment, you're putting things into an experiment. So an experiment can actually hold multiple data sets. You think of a data set as like a multi-dimensional acquisition um, uh, sequence. So that is a data set. You can have multiple data sets all within a single experiment, and you can toggle back and forth between the different data sets for um, that experiment. So that's kind of the biggest paradigm shift that um, you initially have to kind of uh, get from comfortable with is the fact that you are – Things are organized around the experiment, so no longer just the image window. So you have um, no image clutter, so you don't have multiple image windows. Things are organized. The images are viewed in a grid, and there are multiple ways of organizing that grid, and I'll show you that here in a second. So it's easier to get to and, and view and work through the data that you're, you're looking at. The application is built on the latest technology. Uh, if you think about it, Metamorph for Olympus, Metamorph has uh, been around for 20 plus years. So the underlying architecture, software architecture for that application is 20 years old. We've, you know, shored up, tweaked, modified, uh, improved uh, as much as we can, but it's still, you know, a 20 year old package. So Metamorph NX is built on the latest technology that's available. So you have multi-threading uh, capabilities. So now you can do multiple things uh, simultaneously, like you can be acquiring a data set and then start an analyzing a previously acquired data set at the same time. So you don't have to wait for the acquisition to end before you start doing something with a uh, data set you already have. You also have a much more responsive application. So you can, like I said, you're working through different things uh, simultaneously. And the last thing is that you have uh, powerful and flexible scripting. So we'll, we'll go over this in the last section um, at the end of March regarding um, the scripting. So we have uh, – it doesn't utilize journals anymore in Metamorph NX. It uses a program language called Python uh, for the scripting. And, again, what we found is that um, – with the redesign of the application with the ribbons, with the multidimensional um, acquisition um, ability and so forth, that majority of what people were using journals was either to um, create a little more complex acquisition sequence or to manipulate your images to do their analysis. When we get to the analysis section, you'll see the fact that you can actually measure across the entire data set of all time points, all stage positions, all Z positions, all in at the same time. So you no longer have to cycle through, loop through, opening images, doing an, an analysis on it, closing the image, open the next one. So that's built into the actual workflow now with the application. So we've pretty much eliminated probably 75 to 80 percent of what people were using journals in Metamorph in the first place. So that has a huge advantage. And the other is that uh, for people that wanted the rest, uh, you know, the 20 percent, they wanted something a little more powerful than what uh, the journals could give them, and then the Python now allows them um, that ability. So we pretty much open the entire application to them. It does require a little bit of knowledge of a program in order to utilize. We understand that. But uh, what we feel is that just the workflow in the user interface, um, most people won't be necessarily going to journals um, right away or to scripting right away. So they'll be able to utilize the functionality that they have just based on the user interface itself. 
So it is a new user experience. So things like I said, a, a workflow oriented to typically work from left to right. You have a standard ribbon, so new buttons and, and um, functions. This is your home tab, so this is um, more or less setting up the, the displays. So working from left to right. Uh, the first option is your uh, data set that you want to view within the experiment. And then if you have multiple stages, you can select the different stage positions just by toggling uh, those selections. That's there. Uh, looking at, and this is the hardware setup tab, so your camera controls, your illumination hardware and magnification settings. The controls for that drop-down list are available uh, for those. You have... Uh, Okay, I should have, sorry. This is, the application button is only right there. There's a file uh, menu button now, so when we, I'll flip over in a second, you'll see that in the application. I forgot to update this portion. Uh, I updated everything else but this one. Uh, there's a quick access toolbar, so most of the functions that you have available on the ribbon can be placed into a quick access, access toolbar, and the advantage of that is that if you're on a different ribbon, you can still get access to those specific functions without having to go to that ribbon so it saves you mouse clicks uh, for that. So you can put a lot of different functions onto the toolbar here, and then you just um, select that. No matter which ribbon you're on, you have that control available to you. Active context, so whichever ribbon happens to be active, uh, that's the active context um, tab selection that's available. So looking at the view modes you have, uh, viewing a data set, you have a single view mode, so you're looking at a single uh, image, and you have sliders. The slider on the x-axis controls Z. So no matter which view you're looking at, this slider will always control Z. The Y, I'm um, sorry, the X slider here, this is the Y slider. The X slider will control time. So again, no matter which view you're looking at, you'll always uh, control time with the X slider. You'll always control time with the Y slider um, here. That's in your single view mode option. When you switch to multi-view mode, there's a variety of different um, view modes available to that. And let me switch over to um, Metamorph NX, and let me open, um, just open example one here. Go to the home tab. So again, in the single view mode, that's available. I have the different channels available at the top. And you can double click on them to turn them on or off. So we want to get rid of the DIC in this case. And then we have the Z slider here as I adjust uh, that's there. And then I can cycle through my time also. And then just by selecting at the top the different stage positions. So it's all fairly responsive, allows me to do that, and I can also switch data sets. So if I have a different data set I'm looking at, um, I can toggle back and forth between that. So uh, all that's done from the home tab here. That's there. The different options for the multi-view mode, when I go into multi-view mode, I have a variety of different options. So I have um, time versus Z. So what that does is now I'm looking at multiple times in multiple rows. So if I change, now looking at a grid of, just do a three by three in this case. So I'm looking at each column as a different time point and each row is a different Z position. So now I'm looking at three different Z positions, three different time points. And if you look on the, the information tab here, it shows you as far as I'm currently viewing time points 0 through 2, 0, 1, and 2 of um, 0 through 9 time points, so there's 10 time points here. And I'm also looking at Z positions 0, 1, and 2 of 0 through set, 6, so seven different time points. And as I move my slider, I'm adjusting my uh, Z, and I can also adjust my time. And notice that also updates the positions of the current view um, here as well for that. And again, I can just toggle for the different stage positions that's available.
Okay, other um, view modes available, you can do time versus channel, channel versus Z, multiple time, multiple Z, or multiple channels. Um, currently, you don't have the ability to display multiple stages in the grid, um, so uh, hopefully that will be coming uh, sometime soon. The zoom on the wheel mouse, so when you're not using the, uh, I'll show you this too, when you're not using the wheel to adjust a specific component, you then it'll default to doing your zoom control. So as I adjust my wheel, I can uh, zoom in on a specific portion of the image and notice it's affecting the entire grid simultaneously. And once I go beyond the 100%, I get the preview box pops up and then I can move that around to see the specific image I'm looking for. So the wheel by default will um, adjust the Z, or I'm sorry, adjust the zoom and on the specific image that you're looking at that's there. And then lastly, as far as the film strip on the bottom, uh, so there's, a, again, a variety of different ways of, of viewing the film strip. So I can look at the data set. So these are the two different data sets I have available. I have that um, selection at the top here as well. Uh, I can do time. So I can select um, the specific time point, and it puts that into the center position uh, that I'm looking at. I can do Z positions, and then I can do stage positions as well. So there's, again, customization on the ability to set up your display uh, on your film strip on the bottom. Um, by default, most people will probably have this set up uh, for the data set because they can toggle um, back and forth between the different data sets available uh, to them. So, uh, Jake, uh, I'll address your questions there at the end. You had a couple questions that popped up. Sorry. That's there. Okay. The 40 viewer. So you can open a data set in the 40 viewer. And what that allows you to do is you can have a uh, volume display that's there as well as uh, orthogonal displays, and you can adjust the, um, the views uh, for these, the angles of, of each of these planes. That's something that you can play with um, a little bit later. Uh, the other things that we have as far as um, windows go, you can dock and auto-hide uh, specific panes, so like the configure illumination, configure magnification. If you uh, change this, pin to the side, it puts it onto, um, so it'll auto-hide, and then when you're ready to use it, you just click on the specific tab and it'll uh, slide back out to the dialog and allow you to use, and then you can um, slide it back when you're done. So uh, it helps keep a nice, clean uh, desktop with all the different um, pens. We'll, uh, we'll go through the hardware configuration. Uh, we already went through most of this as well. So there are acquiring images, uh, available functions that we have, and we'll cover this in more detail uh, next week. You have the interactive mode, which is kind of your uh, just surveying your slide, and you just want to take a picture here or there. So you're just snapping pictures as it goes along. That's the interactive mode. Uh, Multidimensional acquisition um, is just that. You're acquiring um, multiple time points, multiple stage, multiple Zs, multiple wavelengths, and so forth. You also have high-speed acquisition. This is your stream uh, acquisition. Uh, it currently does not support device streaming, but it's, um, you still have the ability to do stream acquisition for that. And then last is the target illumination, so that's um, kind of your FRAP um, or photo activation uh, controls for, for that illumination. Um, again, left to right workflow for your, uh, in this case, this is the multidimensional. You set the magnification. You set the number of channels you want to use, the illumination settings for those channels. Uh, your camera controls for doing just quick snaps based on whichever um, the active wavelength you have. 
the same thing with the live start stop, the chip area that's there. Uh, here you configure your stage. Um, so it's kind of a map. You can see the different uh, stage positions relative uh, to each other, so you can kind of know the order that you're going to be um, acquiring. Uh, you set your stage or Z positions. The Z configuration is a range around current. So you have the current position, you have the the range that you're acquiring, and you have the step size uh, for that uh, configuration. Uh, I do have a script. Uh, if people need it for doing um, set in the top, set in the bottom, and then it'll pre-configure these values for the range around current based on what you define as your top and your bottom. Uh, and your step size. So uh, when we get into the acquisition, uh, we can see that running as well. Uh, any autofocus uh, configuration that you have uh, can be set up here. So your ZDC configurations and enabling and, and disabling the ZDC can be done uh, through the focus component here. Uh, you can set up your time for the time series, and you hit acquire, and it runs through the sequence. If you need to make any uh, finer adjustments or configurations, that's what the configure option, so this allows you to, to do more settings within the camera itself, like your gain settings, your auto expose settings are found uh, within this configure option here as well. Additionally, you can have multiple time series set up, so you can do one sequence and then change the interval or, or the duration and so forth, do a, a second sequence right, right behind that. Again, those options are set up in the configure as well. Um, high speed mode is your, your stream acquisition uh, that's there. Okay, measurements. So this is the uh, measurement dialog. So the first options are, are grouped in sections as far as the type of measurements that can be done. You have uh, region type measurements, you have the threshold type measurements, then you have uh, modules that are available uh, for that. So you can come in and create multiple regions onto the image. Uh, you can do measure regions. You can do a line scan or show region info options for that. The threshold is like the integrated morphometry analysis. So you apply a threshold to that configure, and then you can uh, measure the threshold that's there. Um, and then the module section, again, when we get into measurements, we'll cover that in more detail uh, for the application modules. and. Any custom modules that you create will be available here. The measure range is determined what gets measured, so all time, all stage, all Zs. And if that's not checked, um, only what's currently displayed is what gets measured. After you hit the measure button, either the measure regions, the measure threshold, or the measure from the modules, it'll create a measurement set, and that measurement set is saved with the data set. And the advantage of that is the fact that if you load the experiment up uh, a second time or third time, or um, every time you load the experiment set and you load that specific data and make that active, those measurement sets are, are now available. So you don't have to remeasure anything. You have access to that data um, automatically just by um, viewing that data set. Uh, configure results is kind of like the filters and classification that you have, as well as defining which uh, parameters you want to show up in the data table. Uh, the measurement displays are the data table, um, summary table. You can do a line graph or scatter plot, and then finally you can export the data out either to Excel or to a file. So you have graphs and tables available. You can filter the results like you can in the IMA, but the filter results actually works on any measurement. So the region measurements and the module measurements all can be filtered as well. And again, it's all saved with the experiment. So the scripting uh, allows you to create uh, an anonymated process through uh, Iron Python. You can use the script dialog that's associated within the application. And the advantage of that is you get uh, context help. So as you're typing in the uh, method or, or um, variable or function, it shows up on the list here that you can automatically select to fill in the text as you go along. Uh, additionally, you can always copy the text from a, another editor if you uh, use that. Then lastly is assistance. So the help button is on the top right. Uh, the Azure license, I'm sorry, uh, that moved. So we now actually have a help uh, tab. And um, let me show you that.
So uh, to help, uh, this is the about, so it shows up the license information um, and so forth, uh, license file. There, license agreement. So this is where you see your system ID number, the actual version of the application, and so forth is all there. The help for this is actually really good. Uh, so it was created while the application was being developed. So it is current and it has a lot of useful information on how to use and how to do uh, these different functions. That's there. Okay, error reporting, uh, we kind of talked about this as far as the configure, um, capture metamorph um, configurations. Again, that's in the file menu now, uh, available to that. And this is an example of what's in that zip file as far as the camera drivers, the hardware uh, configurations, your license file, the state file uh, for the application. Um, additional camera drivers available, and then the status log is here. And the status log is just an example. Um, it shows up on uh, kind of the bottom of the application, and it's just a list of all the different error messages that it found uh, for that. So you can um, click on the capture, and it'll save that information out for you as well. And then you can send that to the support team at support.dtnamolda.com, and then that's your extension. The phone extension is there. Okay, so that's um, all I have right now. Let me, um, there, there are a couple questions. If anybody else has any other questions, uh, please use the, uh, the Q&A for now, um, and I'll come back and address as far as Jake had two questions. So will molecular devices help customers and sales reps with Python scripts for more on common processes? Uh, the answer to that is yes, but we also are not in the custom um, programming business, so it will be kind of a case-by-case -case basis, more or less on whether we want to have the resources and the time to be able to do that. But um, we will have, we do have a few standard things that we've already created that can be available um, to people, and we can definitely help. The same process um, that we like to uh, to do, uh, we'll do for this as we do for journals, is that we would like people to make the first attempt. But understanding that this is, you know, a true programming language now, um, and so uh, our hope or expectation is that people won't be necessarily going to scripting uh, first. They want. We would hope that the application has been uh, redefined enough that the user interface takes care of of that type of functionality that they're wanting. But there may be just um, some other slightly customization that they need that can only be done through uh, scripting. And so um, the answer to the question is, uh, yes, we will. Um, it can be helpful, but like I said, it's um, we're not in the custom um, programming business, so it, it depends on how much involved in that process um, will determine whether we will do that or not. Then the other question, can experiments uh, be cumbersome? when they are com uh, composed of multiple large acquisitions, for example, will the system resources be overly taxed compared to opening a single acquisition? Uh, I would say the answer to that is no, because it's really only um, previewing more or less what's available in the grid. And so as you cycle through, there may be a slight delay on displaying, but it doesn't hold the entire data set in RAM. It's just loading them as you're cycling through. So. Um, so there's a kind of a page swapping aspect associated with that, but um, it's not loading up the entire data set into RAM uh, to make it available for you. It's loading them as they're needed and swapping out the old ones. So again, depending on how much RAM you have available, how fast your computer systems will determine on if there is a lag or how much of a lag there is on displaying uh, those. But still fairly re responsive. Okay, Peter asked, are you already teaching Metamorph NX in the summer courses? Uh, the Whistle summer courses, um, it's really dependent upon the individual.
individual instructor in the labs because we don't have personnel there during the summer. But as far as uh, for like QFM or AQL, um, AQLM, uh, yeah, we do have NX available for people. And uh, for some of the labs, that's really what we use. Um, and so uh, I know for QFM last year during the image processing uh, portion, uh, NX works very well for that because there was like three separate problems, but the um, the first part of each of the problems you had to kind of uh, segment out your portions of the tissue, and so I was able to reuse uh, components uh, to get to that point, and then only had to modify one or two things at the end, so that lab was um, done fairly quickly because of that aspect of being able to uh, reuse different aspects of the uh, custom analysis uh, for that analysis, which is was kind of cool. Okay. Any other questions? So the general format as far as um, for these webinars will be, in essence, there will be a PowerPoint presentation going through uh, different things, also utilizing the, uh, the program. And then when we get into even the acquisition and then specifically with the analysis uh, tools, uh, I will have some exercises for you. And so uh, that will be sent out. Um, either ahead of time or uh, right after the presentation. And then uh, what, what we'll do is, is we'll spend a few minutes at the beginning of the next section that if there's any questions um, um, we can over what was already covered, we can definitely address those at that time. Okay. Okay, thanks, Ed. Um, this is Jake again. I just wanted to remind everybody, if you don't, already have a demo key, um, a dongle, uh, especially for some of the newer reps. Um, if you need help with that, you can contact me. Otherwise, uh, just request uh, part number OMD-demo2. That's our Metamorph uh, dongle. And like Ed said, it'll ha have, um, you'll be licensed to run both Metamorph 